It's not every day the artists themselves show up on my videos and request a song, but a while back, Fat Mike suggested I check out Suits and Ladders. I've been wanting to get back to no effects, and I'm going to take his request. Let's do this. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Loaned University. I first learned about no effects just a few months ago, and I did an analysis of the idiots are taking over and the decline. And the decline is still one of the highlight videos I've done on this channel, but I'm learning a bit about his unusual picking technique. So I'm excited to see him play today. And we're going to check out the track Suits and Ladders, which is from the album Coaster, released in 2009, the band's 11th studio album. Released on vinyl is Frisbee. If that's self deprecating humor, I friggin' love it. But without further ado, let's get to it. Suits and Ladders played by Fat Mike. Hi, this is Fat Mike from NoFX. I'm doing this thing that people on the internet are doing, like uh, Chris from the Flatliners. He did it. So, uh, okay, I saw the P bass in the thumbnail. Said, you gotta do it too. I have not brought this guy out for so the video I'm gonna yet. Play, uh, I'm going to play bass to one of our songs. The reason I picked this song called Suits and Ladders is because. Uh, the bass line is super weird, and it kind of shows what a weird bass player I am because it's mostly upstrokes, and, this, and there's a bunch of palm muting, which bass players don't normally do. But uh, I'm intrigued. Here it is. I'm going to try to play with this. It's called Suits and Letters. <laughs> That's a bit tricky phrasing for sure. We'll go back and catch this bass intro. Yeah, so doing no effects twice, I've learned that he's an upstroke dominant player. A couple of the lines in those songs, especially the intro to Idiots Are Taking Over, I couldn't really figure out at first. It was really bizarre, and I've later kind of went back and kind of understood that technique. It's a triplet upstroke. And, you know, I'm not much of a pick player, and I like focusing on pick players now because it kind of pushes me out of my comfort zone. I can talk about finger style and dissect that all day. But as somebody who's taught bass, I legitimately am learning, learning these new players and new guys, new to me at least. So that's a tricky bass intro. I love the kind of varied muting and accenting. It's got kind of a bounce to it. And something I'm learning about, you know, I, I, at some point I was definitely a player who said, oh, you can get all of the articulation and sound with a pick with your fingers. And I'm learning that pick can provide such a different character and articulation to your playing that you just can't get with fingers. Like, I don't think you could get a finger style technique to sound that way. So let's start that back over. And this, and it's really of weird groupings of notes which don't in D minor. Let me skip Susan forward a bit. Lamps. Here we go. <laughs> Wait until it comes back. Well, variation on that tag there. diminish seven there okay his hands his, like his fretting technique is really relaxed and sometimes it's tough to watch players like that because some players like the fingers really fly off the fretboard and you can kind of see like exactly where they're hitting the notes he's kind of keeping the same position and that's something that's really important to endurance for you know long live shows you know all those little extra movements add up so if you can aspire to keep your technique really relaxed really minimize the extraneous movement that goes a long way with stamina and endurance. And as a seasoned player for decades and decades, you know, I'm sure he's learned that you have to kind of pace yourself. And that might just be an innate part of his technique. But that little pattern is kind of like a power chord fifth interval shape going between, I guess, G and F. So. Something like that, but he's just kind of letting the palm mute a little, be a little lighter on that top string. So those little top accents kind of on the upbeats give it just a, a really cool bounce. You know, if you played something like that open, that kind of thing, it just doesn't have the character. And again, I don't think you could get that with fingers. 
So those are the things I'm learning to appreciate about using a pick. I'm going to try to use it a lot more the older I get and really kind of learn those varied ways of just getting a line to bounce. So I can see starting with an upstroke, he's very dominant. And the upstrokes look as controlled as like a Hetfield's downstroke. And I relate to this so much because as I talked about in previous NoFX videos, when I kind of had a revelation that that's what he's doing, I also have started with upstrokes. I don't know why. They've just always felt more natural. Maybe one of the first picked, line I learned, picked lines I learned, maybe it just started on the and of four and I just kind of, it's just been ingrained to start on an upstroke. But I've never seen this and it's oddly relatable. But <clears throat> Palm muting that D string and letting the G string have a little less palm muting kind of makes those top notes bounce. So I'm just, I think that's what he's doing. That one's sure, but I'm not sure how many, how many notes he's doing on the F. Cool line. I love how he brings it back kind of at the end of the phrase. It's even weirder that he starts just a straight, just strumming phrase also on the upstrokes. You know, if I really think about it, I could do a downstroke going. But he's like really married to that type of accenting. And I feel I have more accuracy with an upstrokes. Fat Mike, I really relate to you on this because I've, I've never seen, I've always thought there was something wrong with my playing wanting to start with an upstroke. So this makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> Landed on that G is kind of a little break. Pretty cool. Cool little turnaround back. So we're in D minor. It's got that kind of darker sound. And then that last time he went on that C sharp, which is nice back to the minor one. Cool little thing. And that's something I remember from their previous songs. They had a lot of really clever musical. I call them smarty pants chords. Fun way to describe them, but just little musical nods. That's like, he really knows how to write a song and just add those little bits of tension and resolve. That's something that really struck me with the few songs I've heard. So no effects is a band I'm getting into way late. And you know, they're on their last kind of world tour. And the biggest travesty is that they're coming two hours away from me this Saturday in Fort Worth, and I can't make it. I can't make the show. I planned on it. I have something else going on. I can't, I can't make it. And I want to figure out a way to maybe see them on another date later this year, but uh, it's kind of the reason I put this on this week so I can, I'm, I'm halfway seeing Fat Mike, but I'm not in person, so I'm still bummed I can't make it. What was that there? Hey, sometimes that's just what you do as a bass player. You just got to hold it down on the root. <laughs> and I love that. I love that little kind of witty humor that, okay, this bass line is a tad boring. But that is just what you do as a bass player. And I think the best players know when to come out and do these really cool lead-esque lines. That kind of stuff. And really kind of have a melodic forefront figure. And then just go back to being a bass player and hang on a root note. You know, the bass player's most important job is to just hit the chord and hold it. So, you know, sometimes I see players who are just trying to stick out all the way through, start to finish in a song, and just be in the spotlight. I think it's more impressive when they don't and just leave those spots to just kind of specific highlight sections and variations. So that's just great songwriting intuition, of course. Of course, I'm sure he wrote the song completely by himself. So he wrote this part, but it's good to have the restraint there. <laughs> Ooh. 
really building. I can't hear the original song a ton, but... I also like how he... I mean, these are kind of like the verse sections. And of course, he's singing too. I love that he's playing bass kind of... You know, I don't know how else you would play bass for a verse if you're singing. You would play it kind of more guitar-like, but I feel he's kind of playing it with the inflection and the the feel of just like a rhythm part, rhythm guitar part. And I think that's what makes the bass still sound so big and kind of like really fitting in the composition where he can leave and come back and do these more little frilly things, you know, like idiots are taking over right out of the gate had that still to me, very bizarre phrasing and picking pattern. I almost want to learn to cover that just to, just to make my own playing better. And I'm going to say something for a minute. I get comments sometimes where I might not be able to recreate what the player's doing on the video. Maybe it's something out of my wheelhouse. And I get comments like, dude, you're a, how are you a teacher? You can't even, bro, I'm a teacher willing to admit I don't know it all and I'm not good at everything. I'm good at what I'm good at. But if you ever have a music teacher that suggests they know it all and they downplay everything and act like it's easy, run the other way. That's not a real teacher. Teachers are forever students. And a big part of why I do these videos is because it's inspiring to see players to do things I can't do or maybe haven't learned or an approach that's unique to them that's very foreign to me. And out of all the music appreciation I do on this channel, my favorite part is still being inspired by watching other players. So I'm glad to see him play. It's th Those lines are deceptively tricky. You know, if I, I think I would have just heard the studio version, I would have kind of thought, oh, it's just kind of like a... <laughs> You know, something kind of basic, but watching him play it, it's got a tricky feel, require, requires a really nuanced palm muting degree, and you got to kind of play it in a way that makes it bounce with the feel of the song. I love that. First take. First take. First take. Okay. Also, I'm playing with my pink pick from Jim Dunlop. It says Fat Mike on it. It's .60. That's hey, how you .60. Play this stuff. The That's why I brought this out. Jim Dunlop pick. That's pink. Jim Dunlop. Mine doesn't say Fat Mike, but you get the idea. Fat Mike, if you're watching this, thanks for suggesting it. Cool song. I want to go back and hear the studio version, of course, because I want to kind of hear the vocals and other things going on. It was turned down, of course, for a bass playthrough, but it was actually a treat to see Fat Mike play. You know, I've read, I feel like, thousands of comments on those last two NoFX videos about his picking technique, and you need to go watch his playthrough. So this was an appropriate time to come back and do it. And I've said this in a lot of videos. There's so much variation between, you know, you can take 10 great players and they're all going to have these unique quirks. And as somebody who's taught, I've performed, I've played, I've been in bands, but I've spent a lot of time teaching too. Players are very caught up on if something about their playing doesn't look like their favorite player. And if there's any takeaway from this video is that it's the unique things about you as a player that maybe you've just stumbled upon. Maybe you have a physical limitation. Maybe your fingers are shorter, your hands are whatever. If there is something that has pushed you to playing in a way that looks or sounds weird to you, but you're having fun doing it, it feels comfortable and it's sounding good to you, to nobody else, to you, lean into those unique quirky elements about your playing. You know, look at Marty Friedman's picking technique. You know, I just got done doing Paul Gray on the last video. He had a completely different picking technique than Fat Mike did. It was very, very kind of textbook, fingers out, downstrokes, really controlled. Fat Mike's on upstrokes. He's more tucked in. He's got a little more of a kind of a cryptic way. He kind of articulates the strings. It just sounds more appropriate for his style. But all of these bass players are world class. And that's something I just want everyone to know is that if you're a musician and you feel kind of self-conscious about something in your technique, Lean into it. It's what makes you, you. There's no rules in technique. There's only things that can injure you. And that's all there is to it. This was a treat to watch. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Again, I'd love to get back and do more no effects. I've seen a lot of requests for whoops, I OD'd and a lot of other things. I need to get back to them, but that's all I've got. Love you all. Cheers. Make sure you like, subscribe, come follow the Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. I'm doing full album reactions over there. And we will see you next time.